What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video in the iOS interview questions. Today's going to be part two about communication patterns. Now part one was all about delegates and protocols. Part two is going to be about notifications and observers. If you haven't seen part one on delegates and protocols, I recommend going back and watching that. I talk about a lot of the basics of communication patterns because today we're just going to build off that and talk about notifications and observers. So at a high level, what notifications and observers are, it takes two parts. You have the observer and then the notification. So the observer is just sitting somewhere in your code waiting to hear this notification. And then you put this notification wherever you want the event to happen, whether it's in view to load of a screen or, or, or whatever. So that event happens, it fires off the message, and this observer is just waiting to hear that message. And then once it hears that message, it executes whatever code you want it to. Again, that's a super high level. We're gonna dive deep into the code right now. Let's go. Okay, I just wanna reiterate, I highly recommend you watch part one about delegates and protocols. I go over a lot of the basics in detail. I am gonna recap in this video so it can kind of stand on its own, but it'll be a much quicker recap, uh, assuming that you've already seen the first part of this video series. Okay, so big picture, the main difference in these two communication patterns, the delegates and protocols and the notifications and observers, is delegates and protocols are a one-to-one -one communication pattern, whereas notifications and observers, which we're about to see when we dive into the code here, is a one-to-many, meaning you can have you know, five different observers waiting to hear one notification action, and they all do five different actions. And we'll see that come into play later. Okay, quick project overview. Again, I went through this in detail in the first one, but I'll just quickly run through it here. We have two screens here. When you hit this choose a side button down here, this selection screen will pop up modally, and then you pick either Imperial or Rebel, and then this screen will change uh, based on your selections, which you'll see at the end of this video. Let's run it real quick. Okay, so like I said, you tap this choose a side button down here, the selection screen pops up. You can either choose Imperial or Rebel. Right now, it's just gonna dismiss the screen because this is just the starter project. But what we're gonna implement is when you tap Imperial, this screen here is gonna change to show a picture of Darth Vader, it's gonna change the background color uh, and so forth, just like in part one of this series. Uh, our base screen, which is this Star Wars screen here, all we have here is when you tap the choose button, we pop up the selection screen, it's going on here, and then in the selection screen, we're just dismissing it when you tap the buttons. That's the basic premise of the starter project. Pretty simple right now. All right, let's implement some notifications and observers to change our base screen once we select a side. Okay, so full disclosure, this particular functionality is probably best for delegates and protocols, but I'm using the same project just to illustrate the difference between delegates and protocols and notifications and observers. And really the way I'm gonna implement this code is mainly just for illustrative purposes anyway, just to give you an idea of how these notifications and observers work. Okay, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. Now the first thing we're gonna do is set up our notification key, which is a string, and these are unique to our notifications. I'm gonna type them out real quick and explain them more when I'm done. Okay, so how we're gonna set this up is we're gonna have two post notifications. One when the Imperial button is pressed, and then one when the Rebel button is pressed. Now remember, like I said, the observers are just waiting around to get this notification. So we're gonna set up some observers that listen for when the dark side button is pressed and for when the light side button is pressed. And what we're doing here on lines 11 and 12 is creating a unique identifier for those notifications. And because third-party libraries or even Apple itself uses keys like this, it's best to uniquely identify it. Like right now, this is my website, seanallen.co. Uh, just like you do in your bundle identifier when you're creating your project, it's the same idea here. You just want something unique to you, and this is a common way to do it. And a little side note, anytime you define variables like outside of the class, it looks like it's kind of in no man's land. Uh, this is declaring it globally. Now you have to be really careful with this. For the purpose of this tutorial and to keep things quick, we're just gonna go ahead and do this here. In a real project where you're gonna have a lot of keys for various other things, it's nice to create a separate constants file that holds all these. But for now, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so now that we have this set up in our base screen, let's jump over to the selection screen. And the selection screen is actually going to be very simple. This is where we're just posting the notifications. You're gonna type notification center dot, dot default dot post and it's gonna autocomplete and you wanna have a name here. And there's a couple options. You'll see I have highlighted, just it just takes in a name and an object. And then the one below it takes in a name and object and user info. So it is possible to pass information through the notification. For our purposes of this tutorial, we are just gonna get notified of the action. Again, we're just looking for the button press and that's it. Like I said, in more complex projects, you can look for the button press and pass specific information. That is possible. Uh, we're not gonna do that for now, but just know that you can do that. So go ahead and hit name and object. And you see it takes in the notification name. Now I'm gonna pull this out to its own separate variable. So let's go ahead and do let name equals notification dot name. And then it's a raw value. And then you see it takes in a string. Now this is the string we set up globally over here on our base screen on lines 11 and 12. Okay, back to our selection screen. So because we are in the Imperial button tapped, we want this to be the dark side notification. So this is just gonna be dark notification key and you should get it auto completed. And the reason I pulled this out into its own variable here on line 18 is so I can just down here, just type name. 
Uh, it is valid to go ahead and type this whole thing into the, where I just typed name, but I think the code is more readable when you separate it out. And then object is going to be nil since we're not passing anything in this example. Okay, to run through that real quick, again, we just created our name variable that's the name of our notification. And then here we just do notification center and here's the key point dot post. This is where we're posting the notification. So when the Imperial button is tapped, we're shooting out the message, hey, the Imperial button has been tapped. And then in a little bit here, we're gonna set up observers in the base screen that are gonna listen for that notification. But right now we're just posting it, so that's fine. Um, so we're just gonna do basically the same thing down in the uh, rebel button. So let's go ahead and copy this and then paste it. And the only thing we have to change here, we have to change dark notification to light notification key, did that. And that's all we have to change. So now when the rebel button is tapped, now we're posting a notification that has the name of the light notification key. And then we're gonna add some observers that are looking for that one specifically. So that's all we have to do in the selection screen. We're good to go. Again, in the selection screen, we're just sending out the message when the appropriate button is tapped. All right, back to the base screen where we got some work to do. Down below our outlets here that I have set up for the starter project, uh, let's create two variables. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, I had to enter name uh, in that and I wanted shorthand for that. We're going to be using that a lot when we add our observers. So this is just creating variables so we can just use light and dark throughout the rest of the code. It'll be easier. Okay, now one tricky thing when dealing with observers, it's best practice to remove your observers when they're no longer necessary. In this case, we're gonna remove them when the base screen is deallocated from memory. So in order to do that, we need our dinit method. So let's go ahead and do that, dinit. And then what we wanna do here is notification center dot default dot remove observer and we're removing them from self, which is the base screen. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because if you don't remove them, you're gonna have all these observers listening for notifications and it could cause confusion if you have all these leftover observers and things are trying to notify it of stuff. It's just basically cleaning up after yourself. This is one downside of using notification and observers because it's extra housekeeping you have to remember to do where you don't have to deal with that with delegates and protocols. Okay, so let's start creating our observers. Uh, we'll just do that in a separate function just to keep things nice and neat. I'm gonna give myself some space down here. Um, okay, so uh, func create observers and because I want to demonstrate the one-to-many functionality of notifications and observers we are going to create probably some redundant observers but again it's just for illustrative purposes to really drive the point home so we're gonna have a set of light side observers and a set of dark side observers each one of these observers is going to update a different item on the screen so one observer is going to update the character image one observer is going to update the character name, and then the other is going to update the background color. And we're going to do that for the dark side and light side. Again, like I said, a little bit redundant code, but I really want to drive the point home. Okay, so to add an observer is pretty similar to the post like we did in the selection screen. It's just notification center dot uh, default dot add observer. Now there's a couple different options here. We're going to do the first one and I'll walk through it. So we want to add an observer to self, which is the base screen. Now the selector is what method we want to execute when this observer gets the message. So let's pause from our create observers right now and just stub out our three functions that are going to update the UI. And this is mainly so I can get some autocomplete action. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward through some typing and then I'll explain it when I'm done here. Okay, as you can see here on line 40 to 50 here, uh, I just have a function called update character image. Like I said, this is just going to change the character from Darth Vader to Luke Skywalker and update name label, update background color. And we're gonna implement code in these functions, but right now you'll see here, I just wanted the autocomplete so I can make sure this function is correct. So for the selector, you do hashtag selector keyword, and then uh, should autocomplete from here. So you wanna be on the base screen, and then here we wanna update character image. There you go. And then the name, uh, remember we named it up here, we set these variables, the light and dark. This is why we did this, because we're gonna have to do this a couple times. So for right now, since this is our light side version, we're just gonna call this light, and then the object is gonna be nil. Okay, now I'm gonna do this five more times for light and dark side. I'm gonna go back and walk through them again, but I'm gonna fast forward through some typing. Okay, and like I said, this is pretty redundant, but again, driving the point home, the one-to-many functionality of uh, notifications and observers. So back on our selection screen, if you look here in the Imperial button tapped, actually, let's do the Rebel button tapped. So you see notification center default dot post and we're posting the uh, light notification key. So what's happening here is as soon as I tap the rebel button, we're sending out the message. And then on the base screen here, we have three things that are listening for that message here in the light side. And you can tell because the name of the notification is light, which we defined up here on line 20. So these three are the light guys uh, and these three are listening for the dark observer. And then what's gonna happen? This first observer is gonna update the character image. This other observer is gonna update the name label. 
and this third observer is going to update the background color. And before we can see that happen, let's make sure we uh, call our create observer function here in view to load. So just down here on line 30, just call create observers. That way that happens. So right now our observers are working, but uh, nothing is happening in these codes because right now it's executing these functions, but you can see they're empty functions. So let's throw some code in here to fix that. Now, because this function has a notification that's being passed through, this notification is gonna have a property of name, which again is either going to be light or dark, which we defined up here on 20 and 21. So I'm gonna differentiate between which notification I received based on the name of that notification. So here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that using ternary operators. If you're not familiar with that, this will be another side lesson that you're gonna get here. So first of all, I'm gonna set up my bool. So let is light uh, equals notification dot name. Here's the name property. Again, it's either gonna be light or dark. Equals equals light. So what this line is doing here is it's setting a Boolean called is light and if notification.name is equal to light, then this is gonna be true. If it's not equal to light, then it's gonna be false. So that's how I'm going to determine if it was a light notification or a dark notification. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to set my image based on this Boolean here using a ternary operator. So let image equals, and this is how these work. So you do the Boolean first is light and then a question mark, and then you do your true value and then your false value separated by a colon. So if is light is true, I want this to be my Luke image. So it'd be UI image named, and then it's just called Luke. And again, because these files are in our project, we can go ahead and force and wrap it. So this is what I want if is light equals true. If is light equals false, I want UI image named, and then we want this one to be Vader, and then again, force unwrap that. So now we're setting our image variable. So now all we need to do is do main image view dot image equals image. Okay, so again, to recap, setting our is light Boolean based on whether it was a light or dark notification. Then we're also setting our image based on if it's a light or dark notification. And then we're setting our image view to that image that we set. Now I'm gonna fast forward through these next two because it's very similar code. In fact, I'm gonna do a lot of copying and pasting, but I'll run through it when I'm done. Okay, here in 54 to 67, again, very similar stuff. Setting the Boolean based on the notification name, if it is light. Uh, if it is light, the name is going to be a string of Luke Skywalker. If it's not light, it's gonna be a string of Darth Vader. And then we're setting the name label.txt to that name. And again, same thing down here in the background color. Uh, if it is light, the color is going to be cyan. If it's not light, the color is going to be red for dark side. And then we're setting the view.background color to that color. Again, I know redundant code, don't bash me in the comments. Again, just driving the point home on this one to many notifications to observers. So again, selection screen, we're having a dark, a dark side post here. Then we have a light side post based on what button's pressed. And then here in the base screen, uh, when the light side button is pressed, we have these three observers waiting for that one notification to act accordingly. So you hit the light button, these three observers fire off their appropriate functions here over here on the right. And then these functions fire off and act accordingly to update the UI. So, all right, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so here, choose a side. Uh, let's go ahead and hit Imperial. And you can see our background is now red. We have the Darth Vader image. We have the Darth Vader name label. Let's choose a side again. Hit the Rebels. We have Luke Skywalker with the name Luke Skywalker and go back to Vader. So what's going on here is like I said, when you press this Imperial button, that notification is firing off and our observers are listening and updating this UI accordingly based on the functions we set. Okay, so that's the gist of notification observers. And if you remember, we could have passed all that information like the background color, the image and the name. We could have set up an array and passed that array through the notification. I mean, that's one way to do it. But again, this way demonstrates the one to many that I wanted to illustrate because that is the key difference between delegates and protocols and notification and observers. Again, delegates and protocols one to one, notification and observers one to many. Now, the downside of notification and observers, as you can see, when you're doing the one to many, um, it can get pretty messy pretty quickly. And not to mention if you had, you know, we're only dealing with three observers per notification. Imagine if you had 10. Now you can kind of see where that gets pretty hard to tra keep track of through your code. And maybe some weird unexpected stuff will happen because you have so many notifications and observers and it just kind of becomes this tangled web that's hard to keep track of. So that's the downside to using notifications and observers. And just like anything in code, these communication patterns are tools. Uh, delegates and protocol is one tool, notifications and observer is another, and you have to use the right tool for the right job. Again, if you have a, a tight coupling, a one-to-one -one communication between two views, delegates and protocols is your answer. If you're in a scenario where you need to communicate to many objects from one action, then notifications and observers is probably the answer. And as with anything in development, this can go much, much deeper. But if you've understood these two videos, that should be more than enough for your interview question. 
Now you know how to use notifications and observers, and if you saw part one, hopefully delegates and protocols as well. And between these two videos, this should give you enough information to crush this question on any interview. All right, if you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.